Good morning, everyone, and welcome to another live harp lesson with Zuzanna, with me, as you heard. My name is Zuzanna, and I'm a harpist and harp teacher based in Edinburgh, Scotland. And it is another free live harp lesson which I give every Friday um, at 11 a.m., aimed mostly at beginner harpists, but also to anyone who wants to find out more about the harp and learn a bit more about to how to play better. Let me know if you can hear me and if you can see me all right. Thank you very much for tuning in. Hello, Eleanor. I can see that you're all joining in. I could see some new people on Instagram. So if you're watching, do let me know as well. Let me know if everything is okay with the sound. Um, today we've got quite a lot of things to get through. Um, the topic that you saw on the post earlier is why you shouldn't buy a harp. And I know that it's a very controversial question to ask, but there are good reasons for that. Uh, many people who are looking into starting to play the harp assume that you need to buy a harp in order to start playing or in order to be really serious about this, but this is not quite the case and I'm going to say a bit more um, in a second. One piece of news, quite important piece of news to start with, next year in January, next month already in fact, my, new th my harp course will start a new edition, a new term. And if you will be interested in taking harp lessons with me, it's a course of 10 lessons, weekly 10 lessons, one hour, can be taken online, can be taken in person here in Edinburgh, if you live around here. And you can uh, sign up to hear more about the course um, on to be on the waiting list, to be notified when enrollment will start. I will put a link in the description of this Facebook Live, and I will put a link also on Instagram. The second important piece of news is that even though the enrollment will start only in January, you can already sign up for a trial lesson with me. You can uh, go for a 30-minute trial lesson. Even if you don't have the harp, you can still meet with me and chat about which harp to buy. If um, what I say today in the life will not be enough, you can also ask me some more individual questions, whether the course is right for you, whether um, playing the harp is right for you. These lessons can be reserved already, can be booked already, and for those of you who will decide to book any date as long as it's booked before Christmas, the price is almost a third lower instead of uh, £30 that will be £20 if a lesson is booked before 23rd of December, then until the end of December that will be £25 and then once the enrollment starts that will be again £30. So if you book within the next 10 days, that will be a much lower price in case of a trial lesson. The trial lesson can be on any date. It can be even later in January if you're unavailable right now. But as long as you, um, as long as if you reserve and um, put the date in the diary, in my diary as well, then it will be cheaper for you. Thank you, Eleanor, for telling me that sound works. I really appreciate that. I'm really glad because um, you never know what it's like on the other side. So thanks. Um, okay, so these were the news on the day of the day. I will put all the links later on Facebook. On Inst for Instagram, as you know, there is only one link that I, that I can put in the description. So head to the website where um, that link will take you and there you will find all the other links and um, sign up forms, things like that. Okay, to the topic of today about uh, not buying a harp. Well, if not buy, then do what? And um, as I say to everyone who's coming to start lessons with me, I always, always recommend to start with renting an instrument first. And why is that? And um, there are many more reasons than only the ones that I'm going to talk about in today's lesson. I'm going to focus on the benefits of renting a harp um, when you don't know much about harps and you decide to buy your own harp there can be many traps and dangers awaiting you and um, this can be some quite scary things maybe that's a topic for another life but today i wanted to tell you why it's really really good to actually uh, rent the harp and starting from the very top when you uh, don't know how to play and you would like to go and buy a harp you can't really try it out yourself you might be able to do maybe glissandi that was the topic from last week but apart from that, you won't be really able to play the harp and hear how it sounds from the point of player. And that's actually quite important because after all, it's a musical instrument. So you want to be able to um, decide what kind of sound you want to go for. And this is why I recommend renting first, 
learning to play a few pieces at least on a rented harp. So then you can take those pieces and try them out on different harps and see how different harps compare. This is very important because each player will develop a very different sound. The way I play the harp will be different from uh, my friend playing the harp, will be still different from my own teacher playing the harp. Everyone has a very, very different sound and your sound will be different too. And your sound will also change with age. So you may sound very different how you play within the first few months of playing um, compared to a few years later which is why I wouldn't rush too much into buying your first harp. As you saw from my post, I only got my first harp um, six years into learning to play, which is quite late, and my professional harp even later. So it, um, good things come to those who wait, as they say um, here in the UK, as the English saying goes. So, but the most crucial thing is that you can play even some simple pieces on the harp, and for that, rental harp is perfectly fine to learn on. Then the second thing is that while you're learning to play on that specific harp, you're getting to know your preferences and your taste. You will probably find out that there are some things about your rental harp that you really, really like. For example, the quality of the sound, the ease with which you can move the levers, um, made the look of your harp. And there might be some things that you don't like about your rental harp. And this is very important information to take with you when you will be looking to buy your uh, your own harp. Um, so that's already important to develop your taste, to know from the practical point of view what you will be looking for later. The next thing is your harp, your rental harp, if it comes from a trusted manufacturer, it will be thoroughly checked before being sent out to you and it will be ready to play. You might need to tune it after the travel, but otherwise it will be perfectly fine to play. And um, this is something that, here we are entering a bit of the, the danger slash trap area. Um, if someone is selling a harp and they are only um, selling the harp, then as soon as you buy the harp from them, they don't really have to care anymore about your harp. Unfortunately, there are some harp manufacturers out there whose main intention is produce harps very cheaply, sell them and then not have any more trouble with that. Um, while uh, manufacturers who produce harps and also rent out the harps, it's in their interest that the harp being sent to you makes you happy first because you are going to pay them monthly and that it comes back in as good condition as it was sent out to you, that it's still playable and more people will be able to benefit from your harp. So they will put a lot, a lot of effort to make sure that your harp is really good quality, that you will be happy playing it and that hopefully you will come back and maybe buy another harp from them. So you can be really sure that that first harp that you rent will be uh, first a playable instrument. That's uh, not a rule for many instruments that you can see out there on eBay or other places. And second, that it will be a really good instrument to play. So that's why I would suggest, especially when you haven't got that much experience, to try renting first from a trusted manufacturer. Um, as always, with that uh, lesson, you will be able to download a PDF with some notes. And uh, today I've included a mini guide about renting the harp and I've included some um, links to the websites of manufacturers that I know that I, my students have been renting harps from and that I know that you can trust. So this is for UK mainly because I don't have much experience with other countries. Um, and just a disclaimer, I'm not receiving any sort of benefits um, or anything, any other incentives for advertising that. I'm only doing that because I want people who start to play the harp, whether it will be with me or another teacher, I want everyone to be happy about the instrument they pick. I have seen quite a few people buying a harp which uh, came from not a very good source and then being quite unhappy and then... Um, Feeling very discouraged and frustrated and that um, means that you will be also frustrated to some point in your lessons and your motivation will not be as high if you have to struggle with your instrument. So that's my only intention. I'm uh, not going to buy any harp soon so um, there is no, uh, no kind of deal awaiting there for me. My intention is only to make sure that whoever goes to start playing the harp is happy with whatever they choose. Okay, back to the topic more benefits of renting before buying. Um, lots of harp manufacturers offer discounts and incentives for returning customers. For example, if you 
rent a harp. Most home companies in the UK have um, some sort of offer for people who have rented the harp for first three months. I think the most typical offer is um, offering whatever you've paid towards the rental of the first three months, offering to deduct that from the price of the new harp. And some of them even offer to um, to let you have your rental harp free of charge until your new harp is made for you, which is even better. So even if you decide after all to go with another manufacturer, you can still rent a harp for a certain period of time just to make sure that you really like the type of models that they have and then still um, use that discount. And it's also always worth asking already at the point of rental what kind of uh, offers are there if uh, you were to buy the harp. Then um, most rental harps are the similar model to this one. This one is a 34 string uh, Kamak. Um, this model is Corrigan, they don't make them like that anymore. Nowadays Corrigans are 38 strings, but this is an example of a typical harp um, that you would see. I'll try to make, um, turn the camera so you can see a bit better how many strings are there at the bottom. So this goes all the way to the bottom, see that's the lowest C on that harp. And then here at the top, the top string, hello again, the top string here is missing but that would be 34 string and that would be A. And that's perfectly fine if you're just starting out and uh, you'll be playing beginner pieces, most beginner pieces. Um, I'm just going to check it's not exactly the same video here on Facebook. Okay, now it's good. So this is a perfect instrument for starting and most rental instruments will be about this size, 34 strings with levers and they will be standing on their own on the floor. And this is perfectly fine. Some rental companies will offer 38 string harps. If you've got a bigger budget and you would like to make sure that you can play all the pieces for lever harp, then uh, you can go for that. Otherwise, 34 strings is fine. Um, I think there are rental companies, some of them offer also 27 strings harp. And I think I also have seen two instruments with 22 strings. They are also okay, at least for the first few months. If there is any piece where you would need more strings, your teacher can adjust the piece for you, or they can um, just find another piece with smaller range, which will still make you able to learn a certain typical a certain technical aspect of playing. So, um, and why, why is that a benefit over buying? <laughs> what was the point of the 34 strings? Um, as you know, there are many, many, many harps available on the market. Some are really small, some are really big, like the pedal harp, um, which I, I won't be showing to you in the back of the room, packed up. And it may be really difficult to choose, but rental instruments are usually the most popular sort of mainstream models. So if you pick that harp, you are sure that there will be plenty of repertoire written for that harp and uh, plenty of teachers also giving lessons on that sort of instrument. Now to the second section of today's lesson. Um, I hope we're doing okay with time. Uh, yes, we are. I don't want to make this lesson overly long, but um, I've prepared a mini guide to renting because even though you are not going to keep that harp for uh, more than a, a certain time, there will be still some decisions that you will need to make when renting the harp from choosing a manufacturer um, to choosing a model. And then there are a few questions that you might need to answer yourself. Um, whether your rental harp will have levers or not. Well, I think most of the rental harps do have levers nowadays. Um, maybe there are some out there to rent which don't have levers. And if you have a choice, I would suggest that you go for harp with levers. You can play many more pieces with uh, harp with levers. With non-lever harp, you're only limited to one key. If you want to play pieces in more than that key, you will have to retune each of the strings, almost each of the strings on the harp. And if you're not experienced with tuning an instrument, that can be quite challenging and tricky. So I would suggest that you go for a lever harp. If later you decide that you're actually happy to buy a harp with no levers and you are confident with tuning that you've learned on your rental harp, that harp, then you can go for that. But at the beginning, I would suggest go for more levers. Um, then what number of strings I should go for? As I said, most typical instrument would be 34 strings and that's perfectly fine to learn. You don't really need more than that for the first few months. 
if um, you find a cheaper rental instrument with fewer strings 22 27 that's also fine but if you're facing a choice should i go for a harp with levers or with harp um, with bigger num with a larger number of strings then i would go with for a harp with fewer strings but with levers because the missing strings can be still worked around uh, but levers are something which will be really tricky to to manage even for for a beginner if you want to have a good overview of beginner's harp repertoire um, then i'm going in a slightly different order than in the pdf you will you will see that when you download it but let me carry on um, type of strings let's stay with the strings you can have rental harps with gut strings, with nylon strings, and also synthetic gut. You will probably not be able to say, um, to tell much difference in terms of sound, although they will differ by sound. But at the beginning it is, I think, not as important because you can decide later, or try out other harps with different strings and decide what you like. Um, what may matter is the, that might affect the string tension. Liver strung harps like this one usually have um, lower tension, which means that they are slightly easier to plug. And that may matter if you're um, one of three cases. You are either buying a harp for a very young player, uh, for a child under 10, let's say. It also depends on the, on the child's hands. Uh, second, if you had some kind of injury involving your hands, which means that your hands are slightly weaker. And three, if um, there is any other reason for which your hands would be just um, less less strong. For example, you are uh, much older or you had some other issues with your hands, arthritis is arthritis, difficult word, things like that. Then you might go for a lower string tension and it's always worth asking manufacturer. Nylon strings will usually have lower string tension, but uh, it, may, it may differ and there might be still gut strings with lower tension. It also depends how they are made. So, Unless you are one of these three, um, in one of those three situations, any string tension will really do for you, I think. And because it's a rental harp, if you're not happy with the string tension that you have, you will be always able to return it and rent a new harp, which is another benefit of renting. Um, let's carry on. Uh, legs or feet, next point on my list. And I wonder if I will be able to show you what I mean by that. In the PDF, you will see the picture. Um, let me see if I can actually lift the harp high enough. Um, no, I don't think I will be able to lift that harp high enough, but you can see that it's um, quite a tall instrument. Um, my head is roughly when where the harp is finishing, and this is because that harp has legs. Legs mean that it's slightly more raised. The legs are about this length on this harp, as opposed to feet. Feet is just a small piece of wood which is um, stab stabilizing the harp on the floor. Um, I suggest to more, most of the adult learners to go for legs because then you, you will probably find that as a taller person that could be a good height for you, for children and um, some shorter people, but I think you would have to be really, really short. I'm 5 feet 2 and I find legs easier. Um, 5 feet 2 is about 157 centimeters and I find legs still easier, so I would go for legs, unless you are looking for a child, then I would go for feet. I'm just checking if that's really the last question that I've got here. Um, I think this is. The last question is, should I go for any of the of the extras offered? And before, before I answer that last question, I just wanted to remark that there's quite a few of you today. Thank you very much for tuning in. Um, and let me know if you have any questions. Let me know if uh, anything is not clear. I'm happy to repeat that in those last few minutes. Last question, should I go for any of the extras? Two items that are most typically offered as extras would be transport covers and tuners. Um, tuners, um, nowadays you can download some pretty good apps on uh, for your mobile phones or tablets. They can be as good as a physical tuner and you don't have to buy one. Those apps can be both paid and free. So it's up to you, up to, up, um, to your preference. Some people prefer to have a physical tuner machine, which is not their phone, because some people find having their phones with them when playing quite distracting. So if you prefer to put your phone away during your practice session, which is a very good thing, then you might want to consider getting a tuner. 
um, a cork or I don't know what are the other names. Intelli, I think, is the other brand. Uh, second thing, transport covers. Most rental harps will come in a big box, as, as tall as I am. Those uh, carton boxes will usually not be able to be used again because you will just unpack them and they will basically go on to, into the recycling. Um, so if you think that you will need to transport your harp at any point, then it's best to have the transport covers. Some rental um, schemes and places already have the harps um, on rental in the covers. You may want to get in touch with your teacher and check with them whether they will want you to bring your own harp for the lesson. Most teachers, like me, when you come to their studio, you will be able to use that harp for your lesson, so you don't have to bring your own unless you would really, really want to play on your own. In case of online lessons, you also use your own harp, so no need to move it anywhere outside of the house. However, if a string breaks on your harp and you think that you will be too scared to replace it on your own, this is something that you will need to learn uh, anyway when you play the harp. You will need to learn to replace the strings on your harp and you are most likely to learn and practice that within the first few years of playing. But for that very first time when the string breaks and you're uh, in a panic mode, it's good to be able to pack your harp in a transport cover and bring it either to your teacher or to the manufacturer to help you replace that. So. Um, in these two cases, you might want to go for the transport covers, but if you think that you're going to have the harp only at home, then that's fine without. Okay, we've got through that. That was um, a bit longer lesson than usual, but the reason why I wanted to, to do this is um, first, New Year is coming and many people will want to start something new, like uh, taking harp lessons. Second, I was thinking about making a vlog video for a while with a sort of guide to renting or choosing a harp where I would strongly advocate for renting before owning but um, unfortunately making a vlog making a really nice video takes really a long long time and I don't think I will be able to do this in 2019 even though I've got lots of materials so hopefully that video will start circ circulating around uh, the internet Please share it with people that you think are considering buying a harp or starting to play the harp because I would really, really like to um, to spread that good news that renting is an option and it's a really good option um, and to avoid having people get stuck with an instrument which they find frustrating and which will stop them from playing. So please share um, if you can and I don't see any questions unless there are any you can also post them in the comments and I will reply later. I will post the links now and I'm going to see you one more time for a lesson on 20th of December. So take care, have a nice weekend. I'm off to play at a wedding now, so that will be a nice one, uh, Friday the 13th. And uh, see you next week. Bye!